Hey, are you ready? Do you have any questions before we mm -mm. record? Okay. Today we are diving into Abby's strategy asterisk, not numbers. And it's going to be so inspiring. Abby's one of my friends. We're actually in like a mini mastermind together. And her story is so inspiring because she did not use ads in her launch. I think the first question I hear from so many people, whenever they're like, Haley, how much ad spend should I have once I get my funnel up? And I always say, do you know your numbers before you put any ad spend in there? Because you don't have to have ad spend. And Abby is going to show you how she did a live launch organically without uh, Facebook ads, Pinterest ads, any, any ads. So before we like dive into, oh my gosh, everything, um, tell us about you and what you're offering into this world. Yes. So my name is Abby Ashley. I am the founder of the Virtual Savvy and I help people become virtual assistants. So um, I started my own virtual assistant business in 2013 um, and I'm so grateful that I did. I still think that offering services online is the fastest, easiest way to make money online. And so that's kind of how I started my journey. I ended up becoming a VA for a course creator, somebody who, you know, was launching these courses and making hundreds of thousands of dollars in his launches. And I, it was like the best paid internship I ever got, honestly. Um, so I got to see behind the scenes of his launches and, um, it inspired me to launch my own online course. Um, my first, my first two courses were not great. So we can dive into that if you want to at some point. So I did have my my failure moments for sure. But I ended up launching a course in 2015 called the VA Bootcamp, um, which is my signature program now. And um, I, it teaches people how to become virtual assistants, everything from setting up your business to the legalities to, um, you know, organizing the back end and mainly finding clients. I mean, I'm, I really, really push the client and marketing aspect. So, um, so yeah, that's what I do now. And that's since that course launched, that's, that's kind of what I transitioned in. And that's my business full time is just really honing in and taking care of my students. This is what I love about you is that you are actionable because I see some OBM certificate, like I'm just, this is an example that I see online, OBM certifications, right? They go in, they go in, they come out and they know how to set up a business. They know how to structure a business that way, but they come out on the other end and they have no marketing training. They have no idea how to get clients. They have no idea how to get a strong referral system network in place, onboarding, offboarding, none of that stuff. It's all the strategy, but it, the strategy doesn't matter if you don't know how to get clients and practice it on someone. And so I, I love that you're so action oriented in, in this because you're taking these people like this is a whole new world for them. And if that's a big job to do, and I just feel like you do it so well. Thank you. I mean, marketing is definitely like the fuel behind the whole machine because, you know, it's funny because I feel like the people who make the best VAs probably aren't the people who love the marketing aspect. Yep. And wrong. That's not always true. But the ones who really love the marketing, I will say this, are usually the ones that end up going on and doing something else. Yep. Totally. Kind of me, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't even the best VA. <laughs> like I just, I <laughs> sold my service really, really quickly. Like it was just the marketing is what excited me. And mm. so it's kind of fun to have the experience of virtual assistants. And I can talk about taking care of clients, but if you want to talk to me about systems of, I bring in other people for this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Cause that's not my forte. So I really, um, and, and I mean, we obviously teach it very well inside of the course. Mm -hmm. However, the, the focus is on marketing, which is, I, I feel like is where most VAs actually struggle. So let's yep. hone in on that the most. I love it. Now, this is your signature program. And this, what we're talking about is specifically what Abby was launching during this time period. And do you want to say, I, I was going to like say your results, but I don't want to steal your thunder. So how much money did you make with this launch without ads? I'm always so weird about this stuff. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> So, I'm like so proud. I'm like, let's roll out the red carpet for her while she announces this number. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, let me hide in a corner. Um, so I will. I'll preface with this. So we've. So the way my business runs is generally I launch my course two times a year, and so this has been oh, six, seven. It's like seventh or eighth launch, maybe. And so, in, and with every launch, it kind of increases. So we always set a goal. So what's our like good, better, best goal for this launch? 
And so we set a best launch of $250,000 because just kind of with the current trends, I think we had done like 225 the launch before. So we we're like, okay, we can do that. Um, 250 would be a really, really great goal, a best goal. Um, and then we, it's a two week launch and we did that in the first 72 hours. And I was like, ah, what's happening? <laughs> I like literally started freaking out. Like I it was love it. So crazy. And then it really just continued to go from there. So we ended, um, the launch ended up, um, and this is total sales. I always like to preface that because you hear these yep. people online, they're like, I had a million dollar course launch. And it's like, okay, but that like some of those people are on payment plans and yep. things like that. So I will preface with that. But um, so it was so we ended up total sales before some refunds, because there's always going to be some refunds, um, at 449,000. Love it. And the price point was $997, or there was also a higher level option for $2497. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. So let's, how many days was this launch? It was uh, about two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. 14 days. Let's go through it from the very, like, let's start day one. Yeah. What happened day one? And I will preface too, like so much of my launch strategy, I am, I am huge. I just have to throw this out there too. It's like, I don't teach people how to do launches. Like this is not my business. So I am like, I, I'll, I'll give away a ton of info, but I will say that so much of what I learned, I learned from Brian Harris Ooh, and okay. from Mariah Cause. So those, I just want to throw those two names out there. They both have tons of incredible info on list building, on course launching. And so I have to just throw their names out there because I, I learned a lot about the launch process specifically. I've had some other really awesome mentors too, but as far as the launch goes, they, they've been really two key voices. So mm -hmm. what, um, what I'll usually do is um, we'll do like a five day series, right? So go live for, um, go live for five days. And then um, we open cart on that fifth day. So we open the cart and we say, Hey, you can buy, and normally there's some kind of an early bird incentive. So I usually just make it easy and do some kind of money incentive, right? And we've been doing that since day one is, is just like a 10% off or some kind of a coupon code, right? That will expire after that first day. So that's kind of the first week of launch is, is just kind of prepping everybody, getting everybody emotionally ready to make this purchase. Um, so you go through the whole, you know, what, what are some of your doubts? What are some of the misconceptions about your industry? All of that. And then the following week, we, um, you know, there's kind of a lull. So my, my biggest thing in launches is that people will buy because of scarcity and urgency. And you don't have to make fake scarcity and urgency. You can really put it out there. And I really like to be genuine inside of my business. But like, people just need that extra oomph any program that I've bought has pretty much been because it's like, there's this countdown timer and I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to do it, you know? And so I'm a big fan of using those tools, um, of like, Hey, here's a countdown timer. This bonus is going to expire, things like that. So that's basically what, what we do is we just have these little spikes throughout the launch. So we do that early bird spike. That's one. Then that next weekend we do a weekend bonus and that weekend bonus is usually some, some additional, um, materials. If you don't have anything yet, like if you don't have a little masterclass in your back pocket, I've done this in the past where I just sell something I'm going to do in the future. So like one launch, I said, I don't really have a good bonus to offer everybody. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to do this Facebook marketing masterclass and you'll be invited to it. So it was a live class I did, I recorded it and now I have it for future launches. So you don't always have to create something brand new. Um, so yeah, so we do that weekend bonus. Um, and I'll preface with this too. Everybody who has already purchased, I go ahead and give them the bonus behind the scenes because I don't want to penalize somebody for buying early. Right. And so, and then we do, um, then I will do another webinar. So it's like, um, an encore webinar. So when I opened cart, I did a webinar on that day. And then when I'm in the middle, right before I'm about to close cart, I do another webinar where we, I usually say, I'm bringing back the weekend bonus on this webinar. If you order live on this webinar, you get, there's no replay of the webinar. I do it two times. So 
if you can't go at 8 a.m. and you can't go at 11 p.m. and you missed the open cart, sorry, you missed it. And then, um, and then we close cart. And so that close cart email is also another big spike. So you can see there's just like, it's, it kind of goes up and goes down, goes up and goes down. And, um, and it's because we just kind of infuse all these different elements of scarcity and urgency. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it though. So there's a first, you have, how many days do you promote that first webinar on cart open? Um, so probably like the three weeks leading up, um, I'm promoting that whole live stream series. So it's a five day series and the fifth day just is the webinar. I just do it live on Facebook. Oh, oh, I, I it's see. Private. It's not like behind closed doors or anything like that. Okay, then that's webinars. So like day one to five is five day live stream series webinar. Mm -hmm. Webinar card open. And then you have your early bird special. Yep. And how long does the early bird special go for? Until Monday evening. So how many days is that? Three days? That's, yeah, half a day Friday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday, and then we close it at the end of the day, Monday. So three and a half days. Okay, so two to three days. Okay, I'm writing this so I can put all this in the show notes <laughs> and outline I this. I love it. I'm like making sure that I make sense of it. That way everyone else makes yeah, sense of it as well. I can share a screenshot too for you. <laughs> yeah, okay, so we have the early bird special, two to three days. And how many times are you posting a day for this? Oh, at least once a day. I mean, my, e wow. my email list is getting emailed air day. And so I always put something at the very end of my email that's like, hey, love the virtual savvy, but don't want to get these emails. And I have a link for them to click to get to opt out of the launch. Because mm -hmm. I understand. like, if you if you don't want to be receiving a thousand emails, <laughs> it's a lot of emails. So if you don't want to receive all of those, then you just opt out, you won't get any of the launch emails. And then you'll pick up with normally I only email my list like once a week. So mm. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Okay, perfect. So we're sending them the emails. We have the early bird special. And then what? We're just... So, so, it's, so then there's the weekend bonus. So what I do in between, and this just kind of, I feel, and I think this is something that really helped during this last launch, is that we do a lot of just kind of like quiet um, social proof over those net, that entire week because there's not really a big spike. So what we do is we tell our current students, we say, hey, if you love the boot camp, if you've gotten some kind, I don't want you to do this unless if you really love it and yep. you've got some, you know, for some reason you've gotten like some kind of good result or, or whatever, you, you've overcome some kind of mindset issue or whatever it is. Then during those, um, I think we do like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you can, um, if you go live or post a video in my Facebook group, about your experience and like send it to us or link it to us, whatever, then we, uh, then we'll send you, I think it's like a 15, $20 Starbucks gift card. I started out doing 10. Now we've upped it to 20 just cause I don't know. It's just nice to bless yeah. people with that and, <laughs> and we get some really good ones. So, um, it's kind of just a little incentive for people to tell their story. Um, cause again, and I know that might seem like, Oh, you're paying people to like do tests. Well, the thing is, people just don't do something unless you really give them yeah. like a deadline and an incentive, you know? So that has worked really well for us. Um, and we end up capturing a lot of really cool videos to use on our sales pages later. Yeah, so, I was about to say, that's amazing content creator. So we are like pulling those just real life stories. Um, and that's something we did this launch too that I think really amped things up is we had this entire massive reviews page. It's still up and I, we can put the link in the show notes. Um, it's the virtual savvy.com slash reviews. And it is just videos and testimony, testimony, testimony. Like if you ever had any doubt this thing works, like you will be convinced by the <laughs> end of this page because there's just so many. And again, I've been doing this since 2015. So yep. I've just been capturing every single one of them and we didn't put all of them in there, but we put a lot of them in there. So, um, so yeah, so we do just kind of that. Um, we do what do we call it? Like testimonies for coffee or something during those. Oh, coffee. I love that. That's cute. And then, then it's the weekend bonus and that is Friday through Sunday evening. And then on Monday we announced the webinar, webinar reminder on Tuesday, Wednesday's the webinar. Thursday is the cart is closing tomorrow and Friday's cart is closing today. Gotcha. 
Wow. And then throughout this time, other people are posting testimonials. And I think that's killer. It's, it's epic. And it takes a lot of work. And, and that's the thing too, is that like, if you're planning a launch, you, it doesn't have to be this intense the first time you do it, right? This is our right. launch. So every time we just added a new element, we never had a reviews page before. Mm -hmm. We, you know, um, we've done the testimony thing for a while now, but like for a while we experimented taking away the weekend bonus and it, it went okay. But I, I'm like, I really think we need to keep it. Um, and you have to know your audience. You know, my audience is, is largely moms that yep. a lot of stay at home moms, honestly. And I think that as much as we warn them that it's coming, like, I, I think giving them two weeks to make the decision is kind of nice. It seems like a really long launch and let's be honest, it is a really long yep. launch, but it gives them that time. We always make sure it overlaps a pay period. So our, at some point during our launch, there will be the first or the 15th, that date will be covered. So it covers a pay period. And so that's just kind of, you know, that's my audience. They know, they know when it's launch time, they're going to hit up, be hit up a ton. And then I'll go back just to posting quality content. That's another thing I think that is important to know is that I only sell to my audience once a quarter. So, um, they, they get three solid months of just me sending quality content to them. And then we'll do a week or two weeks of like sales, 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 go back quality content for three solid months, you know? And how are you building up your warm organic? Cause I'm assuming you're, you don't do affiliates for this, right? Nope. So I don't. you're building up a warm organic audience for every single launch. How are you building up your warm organic in between the yeah. months? So, okay. Um, this is something that I'm like really, really big on. And I, <laughs> And everybody's not going to love my method and that's okay. <laughs> um, I am, I am very much just like slow and steady and diligent wins the race, right? Like, so I've been building my email list since 2013 and it started off with like my mom and my sister. <laughs> and then I asked some more people and then I made like a freebie and I slowly started putting that on Pinterest and in a couple of Facebook groups on like the promo days and it just like slow, <laughs> yeah. slow, 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 you know? Right. And then once I got a thousand subscribers, I was like, Ooh, now I have an audience. I can list, you know, I didn't try to create a course before I had an audience. I had, I had this list of a thousand people. It was like, okay, I can launch a course and then on and on and on. And then when it did come to like choosing a traffic source, I have not tried to do all of them. If you go to my Instagram, I literally like since 2013, like just posted like a legit Instagram photo. Like I don't do, I just haven't done it. Like I'm just like, nope, blinder, blinder. Yep. And so we have done um, pretty much that, that first dollar I made, I invested in a Pinterest manager. I didn't learn it myself. I just said, I'm going to hire somebody to do Love Pinterest. It. And so she's been, she had been doing organic Pinterest for just a long time. Um, you know, posting, I would do blog posts and she would put them on Pinterest. And then I also have a Facebook group. And so that Facebook group has grown to, it's like 30 something thousand now. And so during launch week, I post a lot in that group as well. Mm. And that's it. I've really just done my Facebook group, blog posts and Pinterest and Pinterest, I outsource blog posts. Now somebody else does, but I did that originally. And my Facebook group is kind of just, it kind of self-sustains. Like I don't do a whole, I did a lot in the beginning, but now it's yep. pretty sustaining. God, that's incredible. I, so I know you don't, you haven't gone through the profit plan system, but in the profit plan system for everything that you work on, that's a weekly, uh, daily, weekly, monthly task, you have to make it a post-it note. Ooh, and so yeah. you see your entire business on a wall of post-it notes. And whenever people are first starting, they'll have 20 post-it notes. They'll have a Pinterest, an Instagram, a Facebook, a YouTube, a, a podcast, everything, because they've been told to do all the things. And what I love to do is that you are proof that very small amount of post-it notes mm. can make a very big, not only revenue, but like impact on people's lives yeah. is you're impacting more people right now because you're focusing on less channels. So I, I love, I love everything that we're talking about right now. And, and I, that's not to say that I won't ever do paid ads or I, and yep. I mean, kind of, I've experienced, I'm like, Oh, let me hire this person and see if it works out. And it did. Yep. Didn't, and, and that's fine. Um, but I think that exactly what you said, I, I basically, 
Um, I use team up for my content planning. Um, I love team up. It's just, just, it's just an outside calendar. It's outside my Google calendar. It's just where I sit and I plan out what does my content look like this month? And so, um, and what I do is at the very top of the calendar on day one, it's like, what is my one goal? I, I basically do one thing a month and that's, it like like how am i going to move my business forward one way this month so like this month maybe i'm going to build out this evergreen funnel or this month my focus is launch during launch month that's that's my focus this month maybe it is i'm going to start you know working on affiliate relationships again so because i do i will do um jv webinars to other people's audiences i don't do affiliates during my own launch because i just think that's too stressful <laughs> i'm like i don't got time for that so um so yeah, I mean, there, so I just, every single month, it's like, what's one thing that I could do this month to move my business forward? And that's basically all I do. Mm. This is such great advice. I am obsessed with this. Okay. So we have covered how, what you're doing during the off season of your launches, just providing value, the blog being simple with your Facebook group and Pinterest. And then we went through the, I'm going to recap this launch and then you're going to tell me if I missed something. Okay. <laughs> okay. So one, after we go through your pre warm up for the three months, one, we have your five day live stream series that leads to the webinar on that last day. And throughout this time, the social proof is going to the week from the videos, your testimonials to coffee. And then we have the early bird special on that weekend that lasts for about two and a half days. Then once that ends, then you have the weekend bonus where, um, and then on Wednesday, you're having the webinar two times live. It's interesting that you don't do replays. I'm so curious about that. And then Thursday and Friday are cart close pushes. Yeah. It's, it's so simple. And I love that you said you're, you're only emailing once a day and you're only posting once or twice a day. Yeah. I mean, some, some days get two emails because if it's like, Hey, cart's closing cart today. Close. Reminder, it's, it's closing like an hour, but generally yes. And I will say this too. Um, and this may be, again, some people may not like my method. <laughs> I have literally done the exact same launch, like word for word, sent the exact same. Email oh yes. Since the very first launch. I now that is it. like, sometimes we'll swap out testimonials or, you know, I may change the wording of something if it's like, oh, that, that just, I want to change that a little bit and maybe yep. the subject line, but pretty much it's, it's just the exact same launch every single time, you know, cause if they weren't people like we think, I think we get in our heads that we're like, oh, people are going to think that blah, 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 blah. People don't remember what you did. No. And even if they did, they weren't ready then, or they'd be in your program. I, right. exclude, I exclude all my current students from the list because they don't need it again. <laughs> and so if they weren't ready then, then you need to hear it again. You know, yep. like just, I just send the exact same emails. I love it. So you're basically creating, I, I love that because then your first launch is like a rough draft. It's like a starting point and you can get experience under your belt. And then as you go, you're basically creating a template for this. And as you start getting this a little bit more templatized, then you can spend more time and energy into just loving on people instead of the actual email copy, because th that's what was so powerful to me when you said that it's like, you know, instead of you sitting there and changing every single email you are now just being able to focus on talking to Laura in your DMs and voice messaging her if she needs you, you know, exactly. that's huge. Exactly. That's, and that's what we do. We, so every, like I said, every launch, we add a new element. So one, one launch, we were like, all right, I think we've, I think we're ready. Like let's do a live chat element. So we had like a chat schedule and people could chat with us live on the sales page. One, one launch, but we didn't do that the very first launch. Like we waited, like we just did, it was like emails. I think it was emails. And the, I, th I think maybe I did a webinar. I almost would have waited if I like would go back and tell my former self, like just do emails first and then do emails and a webinar and then do emails and a webinar and the five day series. And then maybe do emails, webinar, five day series and the testimonials or add in chat or add in a new sales page that's prettier or something like that. Like just, just tweaking the system and seven launches in, which seems like a lot, but it really isn't that much. And you've just got this machine of a launch that just, it, I mean, my team pretty much does most of it for me now. 
I love that. And because you didn't get paralyzed by all of your ideas and you're like, I'm only going to focus on these few, you took action and that action created the result that brought you here today. And that result allowed you to hire people underneath you too, so that you could think even higher level. But if you get so paralyzed by all the little decisions, you're never going to move forward to begin with. So that's huge. Yep. I consider everything a first draft. You know, I think, I think launch before it's perfect is that it's, that's, that's one of our, it's one of our company values is we launch before it's perfect. And, um, and that's what I teach my students to do. I teach my, my VA students to start getting clients before you have a website, like don't get it all together, just get out there. And like, you will slowly see like, so I've just started posting on YouTube, like not that long ago. And again, my first videos are so bad. They're so <laughs> bad. And then we like, and then we got a better camera and they're a little better. And then we got better lighting and they're a little better. And our sound is still terrible, but we're going to work on that. We just ordered a <laughs> mic and they'll be a little better. And right. if you put so much time and energy into making your draft one perfect, like you just are like, this has to be absolutely perfect. Right. Fuck two years from now, you're going to look back and that perfect product is still going to look like crap. Like you're going to be like, that was yep. terrible. So you might as well just release the okay product two years later, recognize it was crap and just know like, yep. hey, it's better, you know, like I'm not telling you to release crap. Like you, you should do a good job, but I'm talking to the perfectionist. Right. Here. Exactly. Get in our head, our own head. And we will spend a lot this, this is something, and I have to tell myself this over and over and over again, Abby, spend a lot of time on the things that matter a lot and spend a little time on things that matter a little because there's things that we just obsess over. And at the end of the day, it's like, this doesn't even matter. It doesn't yep. even matter. Like just stop doing it. Say this is, this is good enough. And then I'm going to focus my time to really make the things good that matter. What are some things that don't matter? <laughs> um, oh my gosh. So in, in regards to what, in regards to like online courses, online business, like, in general. I'm thinking about getting out there. Like I'm thinking, uh, sitting out an email newsletter and you're so focused on the design of your little header image on the email when you don't even need a header <laughs> cover design. It's probably going to actually decrease your open rates and you're going to be sent to the spam folder more often anyways. Yes. Things I like that. People spending like four weeks designing a logo and they're not a designer, so it still looks <laughs> terrible. It still looks bad. Like, you know you can buy a logo on Etsy for $12? Like, right. just do it, and then someday pay someone to do a better one. Like, <laughs> you know, like, just, it's just, <laughs> like, just the simple, like, we just get so caught up in the details and trying to make it all perfect. And so, yep. um, yeah, I'm trying to think. I, I think the same thing with even, like, a business name. Like, you, uh, give yourself a deadline. Like, if you have... Yeah trying to figure out the name of your course or your podcast or your business or whatever, like say, all right, I'm going to decide this by Friday at noon. And if, if I like whatever I have at that point, that's just what I'm going with. Oh, I love that. You can just change it. It's not, none of us have, none of us are building businesses. At, at least I don't think so. Maybe I, if, if this is you, then, you know, don't listen to this advice, but most of us aren't building businesses that we're taking out a hundred thousand dollars of venture capital. So right. we need to like build this brand that's so epic and, and doing a rebrand would cost another hundred that like none of us are doing that. We're like right. putting a logo on our Facebook page and our website. And we think that it's like detrimental if we have to change it. It's like <laughs> we rebrand and literally nobody would even probably know. No one would even like, know. <laughs> yeah, so I know. Stop worrying about it. <laughs> <laughs> or like, I think I had someone who wasn't in the profit planner lounge yet, but she's like, I changed my colors from blue to green and I'm having anxiety about it because I'm afraid that everyone's going to know that I changed my brand colors and I didn't create an Instagram post about it. I'm like, whoa, girl, we need to chill. <laughs> yeah. I'm colorblind. I wouldn't have even noticed. <laughs> Abby's like, that's the same color to me. I think you're good. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love this I advice. My own brand colors until like a few months in. I was like, oh, we have like a green. I thought that was blue. Cool. Whatever. <laughs> I literally had this conversation with my project manager. I said, well, yeah, I feel like we need to stay in the blue range. And she goes, but your brand is green. I'm like, no, my brand is blue. And we, we were like arguing over what color my brand was. But at the end of the day, it doesn't even matter. I don't even care what color it is. I'm like, does it catch people's attention? Good. That's all that matters. 
And if it doesn't, then change it in three months. Exactly. Yeah. It's an Instagram post for you. There you go. Now you have more yep. content. <laughs> I love it. This was such a fantastic conversation, Abby. I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you for being so transparent about your launch and exactly the steps that you were taking there. And also just adding on so much value. But I, we have a lot of perfectionists that are listening. I'm a recovering perfectionist myself. So thank you. Just, thank you for coming on. No problem. Thank you for having me.